Hi, I'm Ed Fields, and you're watching Elliot Kelly TV. Never lose your passion. All that entrepreneurs do is solve problems. Solve for five people, you have friends. Solve for a million, you become wealthy. Solve for a billion, you change our world. Welcome to another dynamic episode of Elliot Kelly TV. I have with me Mr. Jay Summit. He's an innovator, a serial disruptor, best-selling author, and keynote speaker. Today's topic is going to be future proofing you. Welcome to Elliot Kelly TV, Jay. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm super good. Let's crack right in. Tell us your story, Jay. Um serial entrepreneur created apps and and technology that billions of people use every day. I've run large companies. I've had companies with hundreds of thousands of employees doing billions. And I've sat in the empty room when you start things that turn into things like eBay and LinkedIn. So I noticed over my lifetime that dozens of friends became self-made billionaires. They weren't smarter. They didn't go to the right schools. They didn't have connections. What did they do differently? And now my way of paying it forward is to teach people how they can achieve the same. Good stuff. Who or what inspires you, Jay? I'm inspired by just the everyday person that has an idea and is stubborn. Um, as I write in Future Proofing You, you only need two things to be successful, insight and perseverance. Everything else can be hired. So there's stories in the book of, of moms doing homework with their kids that come up with a, a multi-million dollar idea. It, it's it's that process that, that I get so inspired of people all over the world. And my first book's now in over a dozen languages. It comes out this year in Urdu and, and Icelandic. And I get emails from people of how it changes their lives. And I'm just holding up a mirror of what they have. But occasionally I get that email that says, this is all inspiring, but I could never do it. So that was the inspiration for Future Proofing You. I took a young man who grew up in London on welfare. He was homeless. I mentored him one day a week for a year. And he went from broke to self-made millionaire. I gave him no money, no contacts, and didn't tell him what business to start. And there's 12 truths that you follow in the book. And if you follow those 12, 12 truths, you'll be successful. Good stuff. You made a quote in the book that really touched me. It's something that I believe in as well. You said that with a healthy mindset, anyone can become a millionaire. You proved that with the gentleman you used as a case study, a living case study. What does a healthy mindset look like to you? And how can our audience acquire that and maintain it? Sure, so, so truth number one is you have to have what's known as a growth mindset. You have to believe. And we all have that, that coworker that comes in with a cloud over their head, oh, this is miserable. That's, they wouldn't see opportunity if it was in front of them. A uh, trick that I use is every morning when I wake up, I look in the mirror and say two things. Today can be better than yesterday, and I have the power to make it so. And by doing that, as strange as it may seem, I'm releasing endorphins. I'm lighting up my synaptic nerves and I'm ready to receive. It will make you more popular. It'll make you uh, close more sales, more likable. Everything starts with that attitude. And so the second you have that attitude, when you come across a problem, you recognize that that problem is actually an opportunity in disguise. Because all that entrepreneurs do is solve problems. Solve for five people, you have friends. Solve for a million, you become wealthy. Solve for a billion, you change our world. Thank you. You've been able to create success for so many businesses. You're a serial disruptor. You've worked with Apple. You've worked with Adobe. You've worked with Procter & Gamble. You found success for them. What does success mean to Jay Summit? Um, to me, success is having the freedom to live the life that you choose. So I believe that the purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. So in the beginning, we all have to take jobs that we don't like, that we don't care about, that don't care about us. You know, the typical job that pays you enough not to quit, but not enough to care. Um, 
So success was then being able to make sure that my family got to live the lifestyle that they wanted and got to make the impact that they want. And now it's for me about being able to put my brain power towards solving bigger problems for the world. And that's the really the joy that comes. Success isn't money. Success is helping others. And the more you can help, the more gratitude and joy you will get out of life. Thank you, Jay. You speak about the journey of success. What would you tell your 21 year old version of yourself? Uh, there will be pain, uh, but you can't appreciate the sunrise unless you come from darkness, all right? The rainbow follows the rain. And so I don't want to minimize an entrepreneur's journey. Vin worked hard, I mean, really hard. First month, he made $70,000. He was then, the mindset was set. I mean, he knew he could conquer anything, but he didn't watch TV, he didn't watch the games, he didn't go out and date. For one year, he worked harder than most will, so he can live the rest of his life in a manner that most can't. But the choice is always you. So many of our lives were disrupted by this pandemic. But disruption isn't about what happens to you. It's about how you respond to what happens to you. The choice is always yours. Thank you, Jay. How can persons get the book? Um, so the book's available on Amazon. If my voice doesn't annoy you, it's in audio, uh, it's in Kindle, it's in paperback. Uh, and if you go to my website, jsamit.com, J-A-Y-S-A-M-I-T, I have free workbooks so that you get the most out of the exercises and start your journey uh, today. And they're free. I'm not upselling. I'm not selling anything. I'm just here to pay it forward. Thank you, Jay. You spoke about creating opportunities in the book, and I found that section most valuable to me. What are two ways that our audience can create opportunities during this pandemic? Um, first of all, if you have problems in your life, you're halfway there. So look at those problems and, and see how can they be solved? What's the solution? And if you have that problem, odds are many others share the same problem. It could be a little problem, it could be a big problem. That's where it all starts. One of my favorite stories in Future Proofing You is a mom on a weeknight, her kid has to do a, a project for school, got the poster board and her daughter messes it up. And it's like, oh, I gotta go back to the store. So she goes back, gets a new piece of board. But before she gives it to her daughter, she makes little lines across it, right? So her daughter can do it neatly. The next morning, she calls her sister-in-law and says, why don't they sell boards like this, right? Simple little idea. Patents it, licenses it to a company, and now she sits at home and makes $5 million with no employees and no work. It really is that easy. Every 48 hours, there's a new self-made billionaire. Let that sink in. They have the same hours as you. They're just looking at life differently. And that can be taught. Thank you. You've worked with Bill Gates. You've worked with Steve Jobs. And we've seen here in your bio, you've worked with Reed Hoffman as well. These guys are all iconic figures and successful persons. What trait would you say is the common denominator that they share? Stubborn. Um, any product that you love, any, any movie that you saw, any book that you read, pretty much anything that's impacted this world, there was somebody that just wouldn't give up. There was somebody that was stubborn. It wasn't easy. Um, you, you mentioned some of those names, Rich Branson, all of them have this in common. And it doesn't mean that they don't fail. Failing is part of the process. You learn through failing. Just like playing a video game, you get so far, you stumble, you die, you figure out that obstacle, you go forward. That's how you can understand that Jeff Bezos could lose money year after year after year after year with Amazon and come out the end of that as the world's richest man. One of the guys who just mentioned his first business was a genius one. It was called Trapo Data. It was hooking up computers to traffic lights to minimize traffic. No city planner understood it, so Bill Gates and Paul Allen's first company went belly up. Walt Disney's first company went belly up, Henry Ford. But when you fail, you don't end up where you started. You either earn or you learn. So each time you get smarter and that's the path to success. What is the future holding for Jay Summit? Um, so right now, what I'm really focused on is the bigger problems. Uh, an engineer that worked for me decades ago came to me 
with the idea of how to get pesticides out of our food. And it was very simple. We have small autonomous little robots that go up and down the rows of crops. Think of cornfields, soy and milo, and take care of the weeds. So let me tell you what that simple change does. So it's a swarm of these that go out in the field, robots as a service. The company's called Greenfield Robotics. First of all, to deal with weeds, farmers till the soil. That is the single largest source of greenhouse gas. So we now sequester carbon. 25% of what's heating up our planet comes from farming. Number two, you know, whatever genius thought the best way to raise food was to put a ton of poison on it that would kill birds and mammals and, and insects and weeds, but it wouldn't hurt us. Well, you know, cancer, cancer knows otherwise. So now it takes the poison out of our food and gives us healthy food. The farmer doesn't have to buy all those poisons and handle them, and they now make more per acre. And then the runoff of the excess uh, pesticides and herbicides don't go into our rivers and streams and oceans, killing all the fish. So this is the ultimate win, 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 win. So did I want to run another company? No. Did I feel morally obligated that this was something that would impact lives in a positive way? And so very excited. My takeaway from your book was that if I solve small problems, I create a little value. If I solve larger problems, I create a lot more value. And that was demonstrated in your example of your future projects. Thank you again, Jay, for joining us on the show. Our quote today is joy comes when we are spontaneous. And that's by Tony Robbins. If you found any value on today's show, go ahead and smash that share button. You know how we do it here. Thank you for joining us, Jay. Thank you, audience. Never lose your passion. My name is Kendra Christie, and you're watching Elliot Kelly TV. Never lose your passion.